day one setup. If you want to run onboarding and CS in HubSpot, what do you need to do? First, why would you even want to do that in the first place? There's plenty of CS focused tools that are out there that you might be considering or might already be using. So there's five real benefits that I see to running onboarding and customer success in HubSpot. The first is process. So HubSpot has pipelines, which are built for tickets, deals, really moving a customer, moving a plan from point A to point B to achieve a successful outcome, which ultimately is what we're trying to do, whether it's in onboarding or customer success. And they really help build a defined process to do that. Number two, communication. So HubSpot being a CRM has all your customer data, has records of conversations. It can keep track of calls, emails, notes, meetings, tasks, all these things in one place, meaning that whenever you're communicating with a customer and whoever is communicating with a customer, they should always have the context available to them because everything's in one tool. Reporting, HubSpot has great reporting features. You can build custom sort of cross object reports, which are really helpful for tying together things that are happening in one part of the customer journey with things that are happening in another part of the journey, potentially across teams to really show the full picture of what is happening with a customer. And before automation, everyone wants to talk about automation. How do we make everybody's life easier, remove the tedious tasks and let them focus on the highest leverage work? HubSpot workflows are really powerful. And as I just mentioned, because you have all your data in one place, you can do lots of really interesting things when it comes to workflows to trigger the next step in the process to make sure that you have everything in sync with all your teams working together. And finally, I just mentioned this, but data. Um, having everything in one place cannot be understated how important that is. And you really get to do some really some interesting things when it comes to combining data from different parts of the customer journey, from different systems. We'll get into that a little bit later with pulling product data into HubSpot. So if you're considering HubSpot for onboarding customer success, you're probably wondering which hubs, which parts of HubSpot are we actually gonna need to do this? Depending on exactly how you have things set up, I would recommend using either a combination of sales hub and service hub or one of those two. You'll be able to do everything in this walkthrough with using just one or the other, um, but it, it's easier if you use them together because they do have some specific differences, some specific features. You won't, have, won't need as many workarounds to get things working. Generally, as a rule of thumb, I would recommend using sales hub for anything that includes a commercial revenue conversation because the revenue tracking is better on that side. And then anything that is ma managing the sort of ongoing life cycle um, progression through stages on a sort of longer term basis is great in Service Hub because it's some sort of default automation to update ticket statuses and that kind of thing, which is nice. Question that we get a ton is which HubSpot tier will I need to be on to do this? Well, as always, it depends, right? As a rule of thumb, having HubSpot professional uh, or above on either of those two uh, hubs that I mentioned will make it easier to or allow you to automate some processes, make sure that you are keeping data in sync with, with workflows, and importantly, build custom reports across objects, which gets really helpful. In this work walkthrough, I'm going to include both sort of a manual way to do things and then also a workflow, which you can use to sort of button things up and make your life easier if you are on one of those HubSpot professional tiers. So to get into HubSpot itself, I'm going to jump over here to my property settings, and we're going to look at what I would set up, which objects we would set up, and which properties we would have on those objects. So as I mentioned, you can use either Service Hub or Sales Hub for running onboarding and success. Just to show you a couple of options here. So this might be what an onboarding pipeline looks like with deals. You'll notice that, and I'll talk about this in a second, but pipelines are such a key piece of running your onboarding or success process because it really lets you define the process, define the journey, and then work, work through those stages uh, of that journey with customers. So with deals, it might look something like this. With tickets, it's gonna look very, very similar. And in terms of the actual properties to set up, there are a few that I would recommend as, as sort of your bread and butter, so to speak, when it comes to setting up HubSpot for onboarding and success. So a few sort of areas that I would look at. So one is pulling in product usage data from your app or from any other data source where you have information about customers. We'll get into that specifically a little bit later on. Pulling in any data, this is biased here, of course, but if you are using arrows as a customer facing plan, 
pulling in data about what customers are doing during that plan or engaging with that plan can be really helpful. Um, pulling in line items or if you're using HubSpot quotes or invoices, pulling in that data, especially if it's to a deal for a either moving somebody from the end of the sales cycle into onboarding and success, or if it's a renewal or an upsell later in the journey. And then also you're going to get into seeing the, the customer and team activity as well. So some things to sort of call out here, we have four, four different categories that I put things in. So the account summary, this is going to have things like renewal dates. What are the success metrics or the goals that this customer has? As I mentioned, anything about the onboarding or success plan that you're showing with a customer. So progress through that plan. What is the target date of that plan? And then product activity, again, we'll get into this specifically, but pulling in when was this account last active? How many, if, if this is a project management tool, uh, how many projects have been created? How many tasks have been completed? How many team members have been invited? Uh, that kind of stuff uh, would live in here. Uh, and I would associate all this data with the company record and then push it into whichever pipeline uh, you're using, whether that be deals or tickets. So the final thing that I'll, I'll mention, I've sort of alluded to it already in this section, but why use pipelines specifically to run onboarding and customer success as opposed to just putting data on a contact record or on a company record? Well, pipelines in HubSpot, as I, I mentioned a little bit earlier as well, are very focused on the process or the progression from point A to point B. So if your goal is to get a customer to see success with your product, right, to achieve a particular, however you're measuring that, right, whether that's a CSAT score, whether that's a usage metric, whether that's a um, manually collected sort of measure of sentiment, whatever it might be, a pipeline is a great way to define the process and then map their progress along that process. And importantly, movements within pipelines as opposed to using a text field or a select field on a contact or company record, movements in pipelines are always timestamped, which means that it's a great way to use that data or allows you to use that data for reporting. And it's also fit, going to fit with how your teams are likely already using HubSpot, right? Your sales team is probably already familiar with deal pipelines for, for their own process. And there's probably some translatable things in terms of how they are setting that up and the types of things that they're looking at there. So I'm going to leave it there for this section. Next, we'll be talking about handoffs from sales to onboarding and really any handoff, both some best practices and also some workflows and specific configuration for how to do that in HubSpot. See you then.